to ask is uh, to make a, a specific question out of uh, my confusion. I would like to know uh, one where to start from. Uh, should we just follow the instruction based on its precedence and its sequence? And the second one is what are the key steps on this uh, project so that uh, we can identify each uh, based on title probably that would be very good so that we can assign tasks to each other and so we can work faster on the project. I'd like uh, more elaboration on that. Thank you. So I think, yeah, that's a good question. And in part, I think this maybe thinking in parallelization is good just because the amount of time that you have for this project is small. So uh, even if you don't have, uh, for example, some resources, you can go ahead and plan and think uh, like a task five, right? Task four. So in a way, waiting just only in order until you get something is not right. So that's why I, I have to write it. Uh, I didn't write it, but it should be on task two. One component is to, to build actually you know, that you must understand drug now, last week. If you don't in a group discuss it and add there like one team or, you know, uh, to actually start using the open AI keys, uh, API keys and build as if now everything is fine, you know, as if that you have the model, right? That the open AI is the kind of what ultimately you're gonna get, let's imagine. And then build that and learn it's not it might not make sense whatever but let one a couple of people work on that aspect and others really should be also digging some uh, you know like for example our the inspiration we gave you just the, the chinese the lama chinese even if you are using mr what do they do what are the challenges so write down list down and let let, let them share the type of challenge that you would face ahead um, and, you know, how do we have this? Have we thought about this? Have we thought about embedding? Do we understand that? So they become the, the kind of, let's say, the going and ex kind of um, looking at like what possible challenge there could be, what possible tricks we should be thinking now and what is our advantage. And others, of course, could work on um, basically just setting up, like learning um, all the types of like the data preparation, like the hugging phase, and you know what are the tricks there and then others just really work on the data understanding the data classifying and what are the data available uh, for us you know and uh, how do we select how can we be smart about our data and prepare it so you can prepare the data currently and almost always synchronize at least a minimum i would say every six hours just to say you know what have we learned and make sure that you have a structure how everyone represents or talks about you know what they found new they must have a task to do at the end of let's say when today now like in your first meeting even if it, it doesn't make sense one has to have a clearly what they are trying to get from either their research from their test or from their thing they have to have at least three things that they they want to address like right a question they want to answer you know so if you phrase it in terms of question or if you phrase it in terms of you know tickets like which has a definition of done so basically it means like okay, they're gonna do this and they are gonna they know it's complete you know if it's a six hour task it should be small that they they know it's complete because they have written this or they are um they have understood this you know that kind of um statement and so that that makes it that the other person doesn't get overwhelmed just because they go and read many papers and they don't get anything out of it so you you would save time so i would say parallelize all of it at the moment like just think about the end of the project you know have like a certain um what exactly you asked me that question what are the key steps basically what are the key steps and key milestones of the end of the project so the key milestones of the project is that you are familiar with debugging and and, and running the fine tuning and you understand the key components uh, of in, in this fine tuning that you are you have distinguished um the the parameter efficient fine tuning and you have distinguished how the base model, how to test the base model, like how to infer from the base model. So, because if you do that, then you also know, um, once you fine tune, you will know also how to infer from that. And uh, another one is that you understand the memory requirements. I mean, this is basically so fine. I think it's already when you do that, 
Um, you have selected the model, so that was one milestone. And you are exploring, You at least someone else should read just the original paper of the model, um, just so that they have a, a good understanding. You know, it's, it's like, just even if you don't understand everything, just you have, you have read that paper, like, you know, um, that the one they shared. Because in that usually paper, in the paper that introduced the model, there is more information about the model than anywhere else. Everywhere else is an interpretation of that. So at least one of you shared, like read and shared. Um, and as I said, the rag part is another one. So it's um, the data part is another one. Just um, and so these are the key components. There's the fine tuning within the fine tuning. There are key components: understanding the base model, understanding the data format, the input and output. Uh, understanding the hugging face, uh, all components that, you know, the data ingestion, the model loading and model training, model specifying, model training, and then as well as also model fine tuning and then so model fine tuning and then model inference and then model saving as well. So like how to save that model, you know, the, the different elements and then how to debug. So within the fine tune, you have this kind of key components. It can be assigned like, uh, for now, some people uh, in a group of it, or as we, you go on, you can assign people. At least you have to compose them. And so you have to have like, I think the key components are there. The, the rag has, you already have a certain idea. So the rag has its own key components. So that means data preparation, we didn't give you. So maybe you can just start at least for test, select some of the ads by hand from the Telegram ads, and then write some brief and just so that you can test this is one or two just at least for you to help for for it to help you um and then the actual other data in the format that you would use it for fine tuning so the the data component is there um and uh, as well like if you the brief and the product information you put it so the rag component it should be like a mix of amharic and english um as an example i think that would be good um so yeah, I don't know is that if that answers your question, but I think these are the key components within the rag part, the generation part, once you have the model part is one, and then the fine tuning component is the other one. And then the, then the conceptual, every understanding it, let's say the third one, and then the writing and reporting and sharing is the fourth one. So if you think of it in four step, in four components, you know, the conceptual understanding and the knowledge component, uh, and the skill component there as well, like just you know being familiar with hacking face and all that in one category. The other category, the just the the rag part. Once you have the fine tune model or using the OpenAI, and then the fine tuning part of it, and maybe just you might. I think that's for now. And then the planning and the reporting part. Does that make sense? Does that help? Uh, yeah, I, I think it has stretched it out a bit. Okay. Uh, maybe when people more ask, when we, uh, more people ask, okay. I'll, okay. If, if I have further okay. questions, I'll ask. Thank you. Okay, Abdul, Abdul Hamid. Okay, so I have a question regarding the rag part. Uh, so, so for the retriever, what are yeah. we going to use as a document that the retriever is going to go and fetch relevant information from? It is, you can still, you assume that in your Chrome edit, I mean, you have a PDF that I, that some advertiser sent you, you know, that, that specifies some about the product. And then, and then a document, a data text about the campaign. And, um, and then, so there will be other documents right now. That's, that's a part that we haven't sold. You know the main component is that it, it could be just even the prompt itself you know what type of prompt so let's imagine you have a document that specifies about all prompt techniques that are out there uh, that are useful for art now you have to given like it it would tell you all oh, this type of it, it basically you are preparing that the the different articles written about prompts um and where they are useful, you know, for this type of things, you could ask this because you get this an explanation about the, the techniques and the tricks in, in, the, in different prompts. 
you collect them and you put them in a document. Now, when you have a brief that specifies, a brief is a question itself, right? And the product itself is electronic, for example. So this should select the type of prompts you should use, right? So this is a, a trick, a tr one trick you could actually uh, explore. I, I haven't explored, I mean, I've been just thinking about it uh, recently, and that is one trick where actually because you don't know for different brands or for different products, you might require a different type of prompting such that you generate text, you know? Maybe if it is in you know, a Christmas gift, the type of prompts that you are probably asking it to write is much more, you know, it is a holiday, it is, it, it, you are actually describing a persona but if it is maybe a product about a you know, service, for example, a bank, you might be, you know, using a lot more of about specifying only how to not be too much, uh, you know, too much words. Maybe much more or less like reliability, just like a color and other choice in UI UX. The prompt also should be, should not be too much about, you know, fancy changing things. It should be more reliability and, you know, accuracy, more focusing. It's not more creative maybe in that sense. So that part is one. And the other part is exactly the product information you might think it may contain, they may give you a lot more products, the, a document that contains lots of products. And then the actually the one, the, the one advertises about one thing, right? And so the other one, so uh, so this is one, so that you, you, are, you are selecting then product specification from a, pro, a list of products. And the other one is they might give you another document about branch. For example, if it's a bank, the bank has sent you a document about, about their philosophy, their vision, their thing, and their services, they give everything. Now for this actual desire objective of the uh, ad, you might select only a subset of maybe the vision and stuff like, you might select only a subset of the information. That will help you for that. Does that does that answer? I mean, I, I am giving a much broader answer, maybe. So you have to tell me if it is confusing you more my answer, and I will try to limit it. So what I understood from this is, first, there is a, a, there is a way in which we uh, gather prompts that are uh, helpful for creating ads. That's yeah. one way, and we'll be utilizing those prompts i think Absolutely that's the thing based on the objective yeah so from yeah. the objective you go in gen in getting the prompt style uh, or and and generate then from that prompt style that becomes a context i think exactly what yesterday a few people have showed i think yaya and um abel probably have showed that and others might be too that they were trying to select prompts from the objective right so something like that um and yeah so that part is one so you you select the prompt style and then you ask okay here is the objective here is the prompt style and here is uh, answer you know creates a prompt that i can use um, for an advertisement so then that basically be, becomes your and then through all of the evaluation data whatever you get now the prompts so that's i think yaya's where the presentation was very clear there uh, i think he did exactly that uh, process step then the you use that one so this would be so at first is where you have to choose i mean this is much more complex now are you generating the prompt in amharic or are you generating in english so now you have to test this one too whether which one actually generates a more consistent amharic so our test somehow showed the English, if you ask it in English, it understands better to generate Amharic, at least GPT-4, but test that one, right? So test that one as well, whether you should generate the prompt in Amharic or you should generate the prompt, you know, whether you should write the prompt in Amharic or in English or a mix of it. You know, that's one part to test. So okay. yeah, that part, that component is there. Yeah, go on. Second component is the client would give us a document that will describe about either the products 
is selling and then he will ask about he or she will ask about the, a specific product and then the llm would go and fetch that specific product's information and then create an ad that is tailored to uh, that product yes so am i correct yeah. exactly so i think that's yeah so in terms of when you think of rack that's what you're thinking like, there's a tribal component where you specifically you know you haven't trained uh, llm with that brand with that campaign information with that other things so the retrieval component is there. So I would say also, I think maybe that what many, many people would get it wrong is that they would be, you might associate just the LLM fine tuning is all you need to do. That's your assignment, you have to do it. It's just, that mentality doesn't, doesn't make you appreciate the, the business objective usually. So I would say aim for, you know, what would it take to generate an ad that is so good that you can actually now post it. Now, what, comp so struggle with that. While the fine tuning is important, whatever, they are a means to the end. So what do you need to do is doing research there and doing much more work, you know, of all things, testing and all that, that is the key part. And I, I know if I were you as well, I would do it. And that's our, you know, the challenge as when you get junior is, you really think the business objective is just okay there to be it's an assignment to be there but the thinking when you are in a group you have now some people who really bother take that responsibility to really worry about like you know will our ad generation become good you know how can we improve it and what are the different techniques so that part is very a way of thinking um, because that part is the necessitates all of the other things to do well so if you think about the business objective so well, it necessitates all the other work to be good. And then you will know exactly what to do. But if you're just focusing on, okay, I'm just gonna get an Amharic text and I'm just gonna generate something and whether it works or not, I don't care. You know, it's fine. You will do the work, but then you will not know what to do. Because to do that maybe just is fine. You know, you don't need, it's not that much work. But what really is a much work, what makes it this one a lot of work, is trying to have a goal for your for the quality of art that you generate. That is what becomes a lot of work or a small work. If you don't worry about that, then it's a small work. If you worry about that, it's a lot of work. Which a lot of work means a lot of reward as well in it. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So really worry about how to generate a quality Amharic ad um, and then everything, you know, you will start filling the gap down up, up to the point of understanding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, one additional question I have, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so last week we used OpenAI's embedding to uh, generate the vector store. Yeah. So I was wondering if OpenAI can uh, also embed Amharic texts. It, it can. Any, it can embed anything. Anything embeds anything. You know, you have to know that. It's just that the quality of embedding might not be good. So you know uh, how to measure the quality of embedding, right? Uh, Based on, you know, basically you can just say the ground truth and, you know, and that's what you were trying to do. If you have a ground truth for, for example, uh, two concepts, some concepts, a summary of some concept and then a text of that, right? Then these two should be closer. Then now, if you have another embedding, you know, if you use another embedding and then it, it puts them, let, let's imagine three things, you know, one is conceptually. So one is, uh, let's say a summary of, you have a text, a chunk, right? So you have 10 chunks and these 10 uh, chunks. Sorry, sorry yeah. Abubar. Yeah, there was a power cut in. I was offline for a bit. Okay. Can, can you like repeat the uh, ground? The, the, yeah, the, the quality, how to test the quality of embedding is that embedding is ultimately what gives you whatever you give it, it embeds and then gives you a vector. And and anything you can embed there, as long as it's a text, it can pass it, whichever model embeds for you. Now, the quality is the difference. So if it really is a good, a good really good um, embedding, that means the LLM is good, then or the way that you embed is good, whichever, you know, how you chunk, whatever is good. So let's let's now, for because we are testing LLM, let's choose a text, you know, like let's say a paragraph 
a page and then we decompose it into chunks of paragraphs. Now, you now know like the concept of each of those paragraphs. Let's say paragraph one talks about something about literature review. Paragraph two is methodology. Paragraph three is like that, right? Now, if it's a good encoder, what happens is that for whenever you specify, let's say, a summary of it, which is uh, literature review, you didn't say in the paragraph one about literature review, you just reviewed literature, but um, the summary of it, that it's a literature review. Now you say literature review, you embed that one, and then you compare which chunk is closer to it. Now, if the embedder is good, then of course it's the first paragraph. If the embedder is not good, then you might get, you know, paragraph three to be closer because there there is something called literature, right? So that is the quality of embedding. So also to compare the quality of embedding, you should be doing some test, right? So you can just actually now embed some two Amharic things that are similar, uh, that you know that they're similar, you know, let's say five sentences that you know which ones are similar by hand, you know, but, and then it's an Amharic thing, you embed it, and then you compare the distance between them. And if the distance is closer, like the ones similar concepts are closer, then yeah, then OpenAI is also embedding good for Amharic. But of course that test is very small, so you have to test a little bit with more, with more varieties, for example. So for example, you can use, if you identify all ads from a single bank, then you can embed all of them and and then from another bank you can embed another ones and then you can compare that one you know do all embeddings from the same bank which which talks about the same service do they belong are they closer uh, than the other ones and something like that does that does that make sense i think sometimes uh, because we are not in a blackboard i can't write so it's harder but does that make sense what i'm saying yes yes so basically do a similarity search uh, on, on a, sm a small data set and then expand on that exactly so that that way you will know the quality of uh open ai embedding in america as well as also your base model as well as your fine-tuned model so your fine-tuned model its embedding should be good okay all right thank you oh, great so yeah ask you know anyone feel free to ask just the one part that don't if if you don't know even how to ask just raise your hand and let me help you ask it. But just don't, without understanding, don't sit down. Like don't feel overwhelmed or lazy. It's just, if you have something, you haven't understood something, um, then make sure that you ask. Let's make, because every part, it's not only for you, it will also help other people, so. You have time? Okay, so I have a question about uh, the JSON data. Yeah. So we clean the, the data and we prepare it. So what will be our next step? So the next step is to know what do you need <coughs> for your fine tuning, right? What kind of format do you need for, for like the fine tuning? And so preparing it in that sense. And and then learn about how to generate a quality data. Um, you know, because it, even if it's gonna be doing like if it's an instructional, for example, you might generate you might you, you might need to prepare it in a certain form, which is a uh, question, answer, you know, uh, and context or basically uh, instruction. Uh, and then after instruction, maybe it's the answer, uh, and then then the category. The category is the instruction type. It's either question, answer, or summarization, and all that. So normally, so for instruction tuning, you need to prepare the data in in basically JSON, but in three uh, keys. Each of this this data will be one is instruction, the second is context, the third is um, I think the tutorial that maybe um, Emmett Nan is going to give tomorrow will make it easier, but at least that, that one we can share. So there are four keys, I think category, 
uh, instruction and um, context and I think answer or something I, I forgot the keys but that way you have to prepare the data in that format so now you might be struggling you know how do I get you know how do I prepare it so that's why you should be smarter for example you might just say okay what are the non-english uh, characters because you know how to distinguish English so you might say like what are the non-english uh, words in this statement then the context will be you know the statement and then the answer would be of course just like the ground truths would be the, the Amharic part of it and then the in this case the instruction will be uh, let's say classification or summarization um, so or the question and answer in that case so so and that is for instruction fine-tuning so learn about what are the different types of data that we I need for the different components of my training so for example if you are just LLM you just are fine-tuning it to be QA, that means you, you get a context and you generate that's much more of like ad generate your your instruction is basically ad generation and that um, you will have to prepare here is a document here you know the context will be the documents that the question will be generate like that your prompts what next you will do and then basically the answer is what is generated and and so that's how you prepare the data so it's really learn knowing and expecting what inputs are needed for the fine tuning and training does that answer your question if they uh yes and i have uh, yeah, another question ask another question uh, okay. yesterday you have mentioned about pytorch and uh, tensorflow so i also want to ask uh, where do we use uh, these tools normally if, if you were to fine tune you could use either TensorFlow or um, PyTorch directly to load the model and and fine tune. Basically, you know, access the layers, change the layers, and you know, create the model, and then just fine tune it. If you just search fine tuning with PyTorch, uh, whatever model you chose, let's say Llama two, then you get a lot of how to do it. But also, when if when you are uh, using Hugging Face, it it will it basically will ask you because it's some of the codes that are inside the model might be pytorch so you might need to define some pytorch stuff or tensorflow so it's there that you might you you depending on the model choice uh, that you need to write a little you need to import some pytorch models uh, pytorch elements especially for debugging and accessing the original model because the original model you know you have to you know it has a weight which is the values, and then it has the classes or the basically the model code that actually you you access, and that model code usually is written in PyTorch or in TensorFlow. Does that answer your question again? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, read it. So hello everyone. Um, I was about Hi. to ask a question on the thing that you said before about using open ai embeddings for the embedding part yeah. uh, on hugging face there are some examples uh, about using transformers that they they give some instructions and uh, the using transformer we can have the results like sentimental analysis of a sentence or something it will choose a model by itself so what i was thinking was this process cannot be done without the embeddings right since it's talking with some models LLA models, it cannot be done without the embedding system. So we're, we're not embedding the, like on the examples that I've seen, we're not making the embedding manually. I thought what I thought was using the transformers, it can, the embeddings can be done without us literally doing the embeddings. We can see the process, like we can print out the tokenizations, the process and thing, but also it can be done without us seeing them. And so can't we just use the transformers and the hugging face library in order to make the embeddings without using the open AI embedding models? But you know, you have to understand right it, that it's the embedding is just, you know, if you use WaveAid, you don't have to embed explicitly. WaveAid has you send it, 
you, in your schema, you specify how you know what needs to be embedded and what needs to be not embedded, and and it, it does that for you. You don't explicitly write. The, the question is not about that. The question is the quality. So if you use any model, any OpenAI or whatever, it's just how is the quality? So you have to check it. So it's not about embedding. Anything can be embedded. You know, you have to know everything can be embedded. You know, everything, right? So even if you just take the English an image, and it sequences, which is basically the let's say a base sixty four sequence of it, and you give it, it will be embedded because ultimately the embedders only work at the byte level, and it's everything is a byte, right? So it's like every character is a byte, and just basically embed that. Just the quality is going to be different. So okay, so Antina. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I need to clarify, clarify. What embedding are we talking about? Is this for the vector uh, store? No, I think so. Not the Radit, vector store. Radit's question is that in Hugging Fist, she can do embedding without explicitly embedding uh, in uh, OpenAI. And I'm saying, yeah. yeah, sure. Like it's every model has an, an its own embedder. It's not like you, you have to embed or use, you have to use OpenAI to embed and then use Falcon. Every model trains its own embedding. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so in, in a sense that it is not like you don't start from embedding and then fine tune. Every model is training its embedder, right? So embedding is really the heart of everything. So LLMs ultimately they give you is just also the embedding uh, um, the embedding part yeah so yeah, yes exactly yeah, so yeah. yeah it was just I wanted to clarify because I got a bit uh, I heard maybe the last the, the last part of the question I didn't uh, I was confused about what the question was about okay but it's, 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 it's important ready to you understand you clarify it because maybe that what we tell you now might not be fitting your your understanding so Make sure that you have understood. Like, so did you understood? Did you understood that you should do embedding to fine tune, or you know, what, what was the context of the question? Yeah, exactly. I, I got the answer. What I thought was like the, on our, on our document there, it says uh, many things about transformers. So like trying to understand how transformers work and work and what is the basic thing that we, why do we need them on this project? I thought they they simplify the process for the nlp right and one of their Ooh. way to simplify that Tran is the what? transformers transformers, transformers yes. are models right so is that so you have to maybe distinguish also the vocabulary there so a transformer is basically an llm just like you say same name you know uh, it's a class a, set, a subset of operations that do that is called transformer right and it's basically that the some of the components of a transformer are, of course, the positional embedding, you know, and that embedding is, so you have the embedding, the positional embedding, and then on top of that, you have the multi head or uh, basically an attention, and then that is converted into a next word prediction, right? So usually that is considered, that set is considered a transformer. Now, a transformer without training is just a model, right? It's just a model. A transformer that is trained is now can do the things that we, we we say it can predict the next word as well as and to predict the next word it of course does embedding because it has learned because it's trained and it has learned the embedding you can use the embedding layer also to embed yeah exactly that was my question since the transformers were doing the embedding so i thought uh were we supposed to do the embeddings explicitly and i think i got the answer so in order for the quality of the embedding we should taste the uh, no no okay again we I, should I taste the quality there's some confusion so so there are two discussions that was there one is to use open ai embedding and test amharic embedding with open ai embedding so that's a completely separate process that is much more you can do now without waiting up your fine-tuned model to see how much can you generate how much you know the open ai embedding model so even within open ai there are many embedders right you know da vinci and others but we usually nowadays we use just gpt4 right so like 
we we use some embedding like because it specifies like the you specify the model and it, it it embeds everything for you and then you can do you know you can select para now paragraphs whatever from amharic now we're just talking about amharic so you do that and you finish everything not only now you have through the embedding you, you now got documents that you want to use as your context and then using those documents plus your your question plus your um prompt again all probably can be now in amharic you gave it back to the open ai actually the llm now to now generate a text for you you know and then it, it generates the text so that part is completely different that is a separate work to test how open ai is doing you know if we were to use open ai how much can we get so every embedding whatever we talk is there right within the open ai framework now another second part that our task is to fine tune and after fine tuning we now on that model we're using our fine tuned model we will now also generate the same thing that we did before for with open ai so this model for us now acts like open ai we now embed our documents using this model as well as we generate text using this model and then you know we compare which one is better so now if you understand that if this makes sense that's that's clear so then you, you know does that make you know this is the two separate works is it very clear yeah yeah it is thank you okay okay so that means you have now clear understanding you know if you are saying a transformer it's just a model one model that is trained so if you embed with that you are using that model so and that model may may be good or may not be good for amharic Mm -hmm. in word vague and others are also embedders you know in the past so they can embed even the very simple it's called tf idf which is basically uh, what normally uh, in in vector databases this is a keyword search bm25 or whatever you heard about that that is you know that's basically another embedder so it embeds every word based on some vocabulary you know based on basically there are the the word is appearance uh, in that document so embedders can be constructed by anything including transformers and everything even gpt is a transformer you know uh llama is a transformer and it's so you know a transformer model that is in in hugging face is basically you have to know how they are trained you know what, what do they do so you can you can just go just like how open AI is uh, trained, you can also just go in like, okay, what is hugging face transformers? Maybe when you load that transformer model, you might say like the model name and the model name can be open AI. Okay. I think it is okay. clear now. Thank you, sir. Okay. I, I, you know, I'm explaining not only for you, but because those kind of confusions can be for others as well. So. Uh, you might understand but it's just that everybody should be clear about and these are key things like very subtle they might so i think asking that question is very useful so thanks ready any other question so that means everything is super clear that you really are and the teams are working well and you have an understanding what to focus and that's the case i'm really delighted fun way hi everyone can you hear me hey. yeah okay okay so i had a question about positional embedding i mean yeah. when i researched about that like i i think it's, it's not a problem of generating an amharic word but you know position it positioning it right so that it makes you know, a sense when it creates a work, right? Yeah. So can you elaborate more on that? Like, I have oh, some confusions so about that, yeah. I think I will refresh also my, my knowledge and I will get back to you later in this afternoon, maybe uh, I will join. Um, but the, if the impact, the aspect is this. So when you embed, you are embedding, you know, in sequence. So the history of all of this is that you had the normally what was in word to vacate and others was basically you are embedding using recurrent networks and or lsm you know uh, models and others 
uh, in that case, they had their own way of understanding positions of each word, right? Like within a sequence. But, and that was basically because they had a hidden states that they were keeping and, you know, all that. And that the problem of like all these sequences, you know, like this, this models using recurrent uh, neural networks and their variations were that, of course, they can handle sequence, the, the appearance, you know, that means which word comes after which because of their hidden nature and how they propagate, but they were unable to, of course, parallelize. And the transformers solve this problem by actually specifying a, a different vector called a, a sequence, like, well, no, sorry, a position. And their positioning basically is to, so that the embedding is embedding every word, right? Or every thing that you give them. But the sequence of each token, so the embedder is generating a talk, like for each token embeds in, in some n dimensional. So it's either, you know, 8,000 8, dimensions, whatever dim dimensions, it embeds it. And the, but the position to get the position of this in a sequence, you need to generate uh, another vector called, you know, basically that, 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 the, the position vector. And so that position vector is what now together the position vector and the embedding vector now acts like, you know, just what is in the sequence, you know exactly the position of the word. And the trick that the original paper did with that is that they they use some trigonometric tricks to ensure that this posi this sequence actually captures a much more uh you know efficient way and just the details i don't know now i will refresh my knowledge and then i will get back to you but this uh, is, uh, okay. yeah, this is the, the high class answer okay so uh, will you be available like tomorrow or thursday so that when we go in depth in these concepts like i mean I am gonna, I yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna give a tutorial on transformers in general just the different components of them so yes okay. Okay. Anyone else? Any question? Yeah, Abe? Okay. So uh, my question is about uh, the data set, uh, so specifically the one we get from the telegrams. So regarding that, uh, uh, it's kind of, uh, I, I think we have to understand uh, what the end goal should be, specifically in the data set. So the thing I want to ask you is, shall we kind of tag or clean the data uh, totally and train the fine tune the model or try to uh, separate the data for example for the bank ads or for the other type of contents and specifically classifying those data in different data sets and uh, chronologically training the fine tuning the model uh, so what i'm trying to say is uh, doing the fine tuning in three, four, five steps, or uh, doing it uh, as a one one time full step. What's the recommended method? Yeah, I think yeah. I mean, absolutely trying to select and generate some quality data. At least a part of the group should be selecting by hand. Um, you know what is an ad and not at least quickly. Just you would know. Just like when you scroll on on Telegram channels, that that you would say. So I would say that one is necessary for at least some parts. So doing it now is useful. Um, how you know divide it maybe just in in a couple of hundreds and just select divide them as at least tag them. You know this is a politics. This is uh, this this is that. Um, and maybe just even if you just generate per group one thousand and then other groups if they do the same for a different channel. So let's imagine just, and then you can share ultimately those quality, you know, then that means you will have 6,000 uh, selected ones. So I think we will try, we are also thinking about that, that's fine. So, but you have to understand between two things. One is supervised fine tuning, normally it's called SFT. And then the other one is just basically unsupervised fine tuning. In this case, when you are adding on improving the base model, the base model, because I think all of the base models we, we are we are listing and you are working are decoders only. 
Decoders only means just they are unsupervised. That means they, you just, the next word did predict. So you give it a sequence, you know, itself it's learning by predicting the next word. So in that case, you don't need any label. All you just need is organize the data in such a way that you, you fine tune with it. But for instructional ones, any of the instructional ones are fine, uh, supervised. That means you actually have, you need to have a label. So for example, you say, or do this and then you give you know that's the instruction maybe there is a context and then there is an answer so that answer the label is basically you have to create it by hand or you have to create it somehow so i would say because you would need both it is important for one part you would use it just purely there and of course the data scene is a problem like i know for now i'm where i'm just thinking how to solve that one so maybe just if you remove some parts and keep them for later, that's better because if the model has seen them, you know, you it might not generalize. So you might at least keep your part, you know, some parts out of the 6,000 uh, for test, your final, final test, and then your um, validation, and then some parts uh, for the training. So if you could label, if we could label, divide every team from each channel, at least generate 1000 labels whether it's uh, you know whether it's an ad or not so select 1000 whatever number of ads that's there that would be useful so the thing is it's going to be manual right because there is no ai that's going to do such things for us yeah so the I, better I believe... is that would have used it yeah I mean, yeah so... i mean maybe you can try it maybe you can try uh, uh see open AI, how does it do uh, you know how does it work maybe oh. just carry you can we can try to test it when we have the gpus we can try we can test also gary if that if it can actually i mean if it's instructional i don't know if it's, if it's an instructional gary but uh to taste as well but just taste it give it and say like okay you know here are three labels it's a classification do classification with uh open ai and see if it can understand between ad and non ad okay okay so the thing is uh we can try to train to fine-tune the model using the uncategorized or un the untagged data set i believe yes but as you said it's going to be the unsupervised version of it yes so i presume uh, some team might be working on the tagging and kind of classifying the document as the other team uh, progresses on the fine-tuning and kind of understanding how the exactly. model works so you mean within yeah. the team members so you are referring yeah, to yeah. Team members yes exactly yeah yeah so uh, and every team should should actually then do that uh for different channels and then you know the collective data we can use it right it's like so each team member yeah, each team within its own team like some team members should work on data labeling and and then later let's say on thursday we share whatever data is labeled so, so let me an exchange let me, for example if you if you if your team labels uh, 100 or 1000 then you mm -hmm. can exchange for another 1000 from other teams so can we kind of uh, classify the data for example if there is a 6000 uh, rows yeah. can group 1 take the first 1000 then group 2 takes the second but you can even or for now channels because it's easier with channels okay so yeah if yeah. we so can kind of yeah exactly Let, let's label maybe on that table Mm -hmm. uh Rodas, if you are there just maybe let's add another one called which channels we are labeling um so and then you can just so that you know that's a synchronization component you can do it also on slack right so that should be fine but that you know we can also do it on on that document where we are we yeah. now choose the model we also choose the channels the number of you know the channels that we have our team is working to label or to class exactly yeah yeah so that we could be on time we yeah. need to know which one is, which team is doing which channel yeah. because we want, we don't want to repeat the task all over again yeah exactly yeah all right all right oh thank you oh. yeah 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 uh good morning Abby. Morning. Uh, uh thank you Abil. he just asked my question but uh i need a clarification on the structure of the the labeling yeah uh, when we say data it's just the Amharic characters from the Telegram channels, right? Posts. I think it's in JSON. Yeah. Each part yeah. is a JSON dump 
So that means one post is one element in the JSON. Yeah. So we, we, we are going to extract those elements only, not the English part. It doesn't matter. Right? For now, just which is, you know, for now. So the very first component is that let's agree uh, on, I mean, at least identify what is an ad. You know, that, that basically add or not add. So that what would help, you know, it's just simple. So you can actually go much more. So just identify what is add and what is not add. Because ultimately then we can mix add and then add, and then we can train saying like, you know, generate an ad. Uh, or identify an ad, and and the model will learn how to identify an ad, and if it knows how to identify an ad, it will also know how to generate an ad, right? So you can so we can use it as a class. We can train it with classification, and hopefully the model also then learned how to actually generate it. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so that that is the trick that we are going to use. If we just for now simplify only, you know, collect all ads. And the next component for that is that for each ad, then we categorize them, maybe just add in brand, maybe just like, uh, so some brand name if there is, but for now you don't have to worry. But if that is the case, you can also then learn one step low, below, which is much more, you know, for, it's called normally vertical. That means bank, is it bank or is it retail or is it, you know, so some kind of another category or within the ad. So is that, add retail or add products add bank add service add something right so so for each ad if we give it a, a basically a tag so if we identify a tag and that tag could be you know just verticals i think um uh add so we can actually um this is for example So this one is, for example, you can use uh, just a subset of this. So in this, for example, I'm at least one person, can you share it also on the Slack so that it, it doesn't get lost? So this one, for example, is, you know, it's how usually is defined within, of course, you don't need most of it for you, but entertainment, so within entertainment, energy education financial food healthcare hospitality manufacturing mass media telecommunication so things like that um so even just the general component of it is like you know if, if we don't go even one step just we just say you know relevant ones like construction education and entertainment financial food uh information manufacturing mass media so this is the higher part of it then i think that will give you a much even more resolution right so then not only you can train an ad you can actually do a lot of fine tuning you can just say because you know which ads have a tag you can say like okay you know these are a set of ads so you are you know identify which ad is the let's say financial and then you know which one is the answer, therefore you do it. So once you target, you can train the model, it is instructed to learn more about different combination of ad. One is you know, whether this is an ad or not, the other one is within this ad, which one is which. So you can create multiple, fine you know, uh, supervised um, data. So that, that way is a, an easier trick. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, great. Abel? Yeah, Abel, you can go. Uh, so what I was trying to say is, uh, I think uh, there should be an example so that it can be uniform because yes. uh, one team is going to be doing it another way and the other team is going to be doing it another I'm way. I'm going to be working with Natnaya just to share that before his tutorial. So maybe just right. we will share just one recommend it um, even if it's not going to be ideal because we haven't you know it takes some sometimes time to do good but we'll just share one schema that everyone should uh, produce all right all right good you know these are the type of questions i like because don't think we know that you know we don't give you any problem that we know so we also are learning together 
Uh, the only difference is that we have told about, we have verified that it's doable, and then we try to work together. And that way, you know, also you are solving the problem, right? It's not, you're not, so you're not just being tried on a problem, the solution is known. So just, I think this is very useful um, in part. Okay, any other question? Okay, so I think then let me leave you here. I hope everyone has a quite, uh, you know, clear now. And in your team, please discuss and generate questions. And at any time, we can arrange a call like this as well, Q&A or any other discussion, but in the tutorials, you can also ask. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. We can stop the recording in academy team and yeah, cheers, everyone. Bye.